Hey everybody, welcome back to the bench. Uh, Sam Winnish is with Winnish Gunworks here as always. And uh, as I promised in a previous episode, we were going to get a different barrel uh, to explain full uh, barrel hood and lower lug fittings. Since the barrel we're using on our main project here um, was cut by the factory already to fit their own slides. So we didn't have to worry about that. So uh, I've got a sick gun on the bench that needs a new barrel put in it. Um, happens to be uh, my personal competition gun and uh, for whatever reason the original barrel in the gun which is this Schumann um, which is a very nice barrel there's nothing wrong with this barrel from the factory uh, the operator air so to speak uh, this barrel is not shooting very well uh, so we need to put a new barrel in it uh, I wanted to replace it with another Schumann uh, because I like the barrel so much uh, but uh, as it turns out, they uh, are kind of defunct now, so can't get a direct uh, Schumann replacement. So uh, sad to say, you know, she's got to go, but she's got to go. So we have a, uh, a brand new, right out of the box, uh, KKM Precision, uh, 1911 barrel, 5 inch bull, uh, <clears throat> 40 Smith and Wesson, uh, Clark Para uh, cut, uh, feed ramp, okay. Um, we're going to go into feed ramps uh, later when we start fitting the barrel to our frame in our, our other uh, project. Uh, so I'm not really going to talk about the what, what the Clark Pair ramp cut is on this barrel. But it, that, that's the ramp cut it has if you're wondering. <clears throat> so uh, this is the slide. And this barrel is definitely not going in. It's not sliding back, it's not locking up, nothing. So we've de definitely got to fit the hood here on this barrel. Now, if you haven't gotten the theme from the previous episodes on our uh, commander build, measuring and measuring tools are quite important. Uh, and taking accurate measurements is very important, especially for what we're about to do, because we want a very precise uh, fit uh, for this barrel hood into the breech face. Uh, we don't want it super mega tight, uh, but we don't want it loose or sloppy either. We want it to just rest in there uh, without moving. Um, so we, we've got to kind of go slow. We've got to be precise with uh, the, the amount of material that we take away. So... And it all starts with good, uh, solid measurements from the get-go, all right? So to start, uh, you know, you might think, okay, well, you know, if you've, if you've never done this before, you might think, well, you know, I'm going to take my calipers. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to measure my, uh, my, my hood here. And it measures, this one measures, we'll, we'll round up, we'll say 398 thousandths. It measures 0.3, or I'm sorry, 398. Yeah, 398 thousandths. So I would write that down, 0.398. Well, I'm going to write it down anyway. 0.398. And then, uh, you know, just take a measure in here. Uh, 0.37. We'll round up again. Uh, 0 0.375. So three eighths. 0.375. Uh, well, you know, common sense. Do, do it little bit of math, subtract the difference, divide by two, and take that amount off of each side, and well, it should go right in, right? Well, we'll, we'll do that math, and then we're going to do it the way um, I, I've been taught to do it and always done it, um, and we'll, we'll see if it was the same. So we're going to start with 0.398, we're going to subtract 0.375, so we've got three, two, zero. So 23 thousandths is the difference. Now we would divide that by two. So 20 or zero three, right? Divide by two. And we would come up with is that eleven point five? Well, eleven and a half thousandths, that would be point zero one one five. Okay. And you would round down in this case. So you would round down to eleven because you always want to go <clears throat> you want to re always remove less material to be on the safe side in case you accidentally boogered it up or there's a tolerance stack in the measuring somewhere. You, you always want to go on the safe side. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll see once, once we measure if uh, 11 and a half thousandths or 12 thousandths or 11 thousandths is the, the right amount that we need to take off of each side. Okay. Now the way that I have been taught to do this <clears throat> and the way it's always worked for me, uh, First things first, like, like I did before with the slide measuring, is always draw. Okay, draw a representation. So, 
I'm going to draw my barrel hood here. So I have my barrel hood. Okay, and we're going to write our, all our measurements down. Always allow the uh, the pencil to to do my memory, right? Allow the pencil to be my brain. And then over here, we're going to draw a, a breech face. So. All right, so here's kind of my makeshift breach face, right? This kind of, you know, eh, goes back here, and that's like that. And this is our, this kind of comes out like that. Whatever, I'm, I'm not an artist, right? You guys get the idea. Uh, top-down view of the breach face, top-down view of the barrel hood. So we know we already measured our uh, our barrel hood. Um, that was 0 .398, but since I got precision measuring instruments. There's no point in having them if uh, if you don't use them, right? Using a, a micrometer stand is uh, kind of the way to go in holding these little parts like this. All right. And yeah, 398. So total width, 0.398 thousandths. Okay, we know that the width of <clears throat> this is 0.375 already. We already know that. Now, we're, we're, we need to do some fill-in measurements here, and then we need to put the barrel in and, uh, and take a measurement. So the first measurement I'm going to take is I'm going to take the measurement from here to here, okay? The, the width of the, from, from the outside of the slide to the inside of the breech face, okay? Now it's kind of important that you get the outside of your calipers down to the correct part of your slide. Don't measure on a curve. That's 294. That says 294. Okay, this is a point. 294. I'm going to take that measurement a couple times just to see if I messed something up the first time. Because again, there is a, a bit of a technique to using calipers, so that way you don't make it read what you want it to read. So right now I'm getting something different. And you also kind of have to be careful as you measure. Uh, here you'll, you'll see the cutout in the breech face, so you don't, wanna, uh, you don't want your calipers to rock. Um, okay, now it's saying 290. Doing it and then showing it for the camera is not two ninety two. Two ninety two the second time. I'm going to do this again. You might be asking yourself, why don't you just use your your micrometer? Well, my, the micrometer really doesn't work that way. If I try to stick it down in here. Actually, will fit in this one. I'll just be able to catch the uh, the flat part of the slide here. Yeah, it's not really. This is why I don't use the micrometer on, on stuff like this. It's not a because of the curvature of the breech face. You, you kind of need the long. Uh, Yeah, the length of the measuring surface of the calipers. Yeah. Yeah, 292. So we're gonna go with 292 here. So I know that from the outside of the slide, to the inside of uh, the recess on the breech face is 292 thousandths. Now the next thing I need to do is put the barrel in here. Now you go, well it doesn't fit. Why are you putting it in there? Well I know it doesn't fit. And I need my, my barrel alignment block. Okay, so, so I keep my, uh, my barrel straight. Now if, if you're not familiar with using a barrel alignment block, you see there's two cutouts on either side. This uh, Each cutout um, 
is to slide in to your uh, uh, your your uh, your ramp. Okay, your feed ramp. Now, there's two sizes. Okay, this one is tighter. This one's a little wider. You need to uh, pick the one that your barrel fits into. Okay. So I got my barrel alignment block in here to keep to make sure that uh, my barrel is in proper position for when I take this measurement because I don't want my barrel tilted. If my barrel is tilted one way or the other, the edge of the uh, the hood, which is what we're about to measure, is not going to be properly aligned. So I got the everything in there, and again, I'm going from the outside of the slide to the outside of the breech face. And again, I'm, I'm going to take this measurement a few times. Okay, so that's 675. Right down. 675. 675. Okay, 675 twice in a row. I'm comfortable with taking that. Okay, so now we know from the edge of our, the outside edge of our slide to the outside edge of the barrel hood is 0.675. Now, here I'll kind of draw the representation in here. So from here to here, okay, that is 0.675. Now you're gonna ask yourself, well, what, 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 what does that matter? Well, that measurement is everything. So we can start to deduce now how much material needs to be taken off of each side. And this is how we do it. So we know this is 0.375, right? And <clears throat> so we've got 0.675 from the outside here to the edge of our barrel hood. Now the first thing we need to do is subtract off this 0.92 from our 0.675. So we've got 0.292. Okay, so that's three, five, one, you've got, sorry, phone's ringing, um, eight, and five minus two is three, so 383. Okay, so now we know that from the inside edge of this, or the, well, not the inside, it's both inside edges, uh, the right edge of the, uh, the recess for the breech face to the outside of the actual uh, uh, barrel hood is 0.383 inches. That's in, a, an important measurement, okay? So now we have 385, okay? So what we're gonna do right now is I'm going to subtract 0.375 from 0.383, and this is gonna tell us how much uh, we need to take off uh, this edge of our barrel hood. So 0.375. Seven one, we have eight, zero, zero, so eight thousandths. Okay, so from this edge, we need to take off eight thousandths. Now, so that would leave us down now. So now if we take eight thousandths off the total width of this, which is 0.398, okay, so 0.398 minus 0 0.008, which again, that's the amount of material that needs to be removed. Uh, we'll just call this the left edge, from the left edge of the barrel hood, if you're good with math, okay, now we're left with a total width of 390,000, so 0.390. Well, this slot is only 0.375 wide, so do some simple deduction. All we have to do now to figure out how much we're gonna, we need to take off the right side of the hood is subtract uh, 0.375 from our remaining 0.390. So let's do that, and again, if you're somewhat good with math, you've already figured out that we need to subtract 15 thousandths off the right side of the barrel hood. So that's why you do the math this way. That's why you take the measurements the way I just showed you. Because if we just did the unassuming method, assuming that it was equal on both sides, you would be taking too much off the left side. Okay, you'd be taking three to four thousandths too much off the left side and you would not have been uh, taken enough off the right side, okay? <clears throat> so that's how much you would go. Now, if you're gonna do this by hand, you're gonna take a file, 
any, any file that works. Okay, I would suggest using a stiff file. So hey, here you go again, uh, Brownells barrel lug locking file. Okay. Um, and you're going to uh, attack this very slowly, all right? Uh, very important. Here's our uh, our armor's block. Um, I, I I want to go at this on a very steady surface, okay? So I, I've got a bench block out. Um, I'm only going to go at one side at a time, all right? So right now I'm filing on the right side. I'm going to take my file and being very very uh, attentive to the angle of my file not to uh, rock my file one way or the other but to keep it flat against the file uh, the surface i'm filing and just slowly start going at it and make making sure that i measure frequently to see how much i'm removing um, this is a good file to use because it already has safe edges ground into them so when you're filing on uh, the one side down here you're not also filing uh, against here okay so I would file down until I have reached the measurement uh, I want to reach. Okay, so this being the right side, I would file off 15 thousandths of material. And I would, <clears throat> uh, so 398 is our beginning measurement minus 15, that's 383. So I would file this until my total width was 383 thousandths. Uh, I, I might stop short, I might uh, leave two thousandths just in case I messed up a measurement somewhere. Uh, flip it over. And, and do the same, remove my eight thousandths. Again, I, I might stop short, you know, I might take six or seven thousandths off just in case, um, you know, I boogered up a measurement somewhere and uh, I, I don't want to take too much. And then I'm going to go ahead and try and test fit. Um, and if you are a thousandth or, or two off, uh, you're going to be able to see. So I'm going I'm to start marking it with Sharpie and trying to press it in there. And you're going to see which sides are rubbing and slowly start taking more material off as I go, uh, making sure to pay attention that I keep this nice and flat uh, and pick, you know keep keep the 90 degree right angle uh, on the barrel hood and, and all that okay uh, and once it started to slid in then we go to barrel hood but I've got a mill <laughs> and as I showed you in my tooling uh, episode um, I made this jig uh, specifically to cut barrel hoods on so this barrel is just gonna fall right into there and uh, this being my left side and this being my right side, I'm going to remove uh, seven thousandths here. I'm going to stay a thousandths under. So I'm going to remove seven thousandths from uh, this side and fourteen thousandths from this side. I'm going to go throw this in my mill, just run it, you know, touch off and uh, boom, boom, and, uh, and then come back uh, for a barrel hood. But I'm going to show you how to measure barrel hood uh, length first before I go ahead and do that. So uh, I showed you this as well. In the tooling episode, this is an EGW hood length gauge. And let me see if I can show you the markings on here. Get a refocus. Nope. Refocus this. Come on. Please. Please refocus. Why do you know do that? Okay, well, there we go. All right. So, as you see right here, okay, EGW 1.3 blank blank. And then you also see some other numbers on here, okay? So 13, 15, 18, 21, all right? And uh, each one of these lengths are corresponding lengths to 1.3, 1 3 inches. So from corner to corner here on, on this side is 1.3, 1 3 inches. On the bottom, from corner to corner, is 1.315, 1.318, and 1.321 inches. Now, the way this is used, now I've, I've already measured the slide, so I know which slide is going to go in, but I'll, uh, I'll do the wrong one first. So I'm going to use 1.8. So you take your slide, and this goes on the inside of the slide, and you're going to push it up against the breech face and attempt to drop that length down into uh, the opening, okay, where your barrel hood would lock into. So this is too big, okay, so it's not, it's not allowing me to go in, okay, it's just rocking there. So I'm going to try a shorter one. So that was 1.8, we'll go to 1.5. 1.5, and it's... Uh, no, it's not going. It's almost wanting to go, 
but it's not going. So that leaves me with one other option, which is the 1 3 length. So 1.313, and what do you know? Very snugly, it fits up in there. Okay, so that's going to be the length of my barrel hood. Now, when I say length of my barrel hood, I'm not talking about this little length right here. Man, this camera's got to stop doing that. I got to figure out a way to make this thing stop shutting off. Okay, so the barrel length of barrel hood, as you saw before, okay, 1.353. Five two ish one point three five zero. Okay. So one point three five zero minus one point three one three, which is the length it needs to be. Let's do some simple math. Four one ten seven three zero zero. So we need to take off. 37 thousandths of length off the, the barrel hood here. So now that I have all three measurements, um, I can go ahead and attack uh, on the mill. Okay. Um, and again, if, uh, if, if you don't have a mill, once you have that measurement, okay, you can go ahead and uh, again, on, on the bench block or some other uh, solid rigid way, you could put it in your bench, uh, bench vise. Just uh, some other solid way to keep the barrel uh, stable, all right, and uh, very slowly. Uh, again, making sure that you keep, I mean, make, make sure I put the safe edge up against this thing. Um, you know, keeping your file straight and parallel is very important. Uh, check often to, to ensure that you're keeping it flat and parallel, and then if you need to correct it, go ahead and correct it. Uh, you can do that by placing uh, a flat edge. I mean, you can use the grant. If you're going to use this this file specifically, uh, or any file, any stiff, rigid file, not a needle file, those those have bends in them. You can put a bend in one of those files. Uh, but any straight edge, like a ruler or a machinist straight edge, uh, you can put it against it, and you can see if there's a gap. Okay. Uh, but making sure that you keep you know nice, nice straight strokes, going down and measuring, you know, until you get there. And again, stop short until it clicks in but you have to do the sides first that way it'll drop into the breech recess and then the length so it'll come up okay and, and go into lock up all right so now that i have my measurements uh, i'm going to set this up on the mill and we'll come back all right we're over at the mill we got our barrel set up in our uh, hood cutting jig in the mill and uh, we're ready to go ahead and get uh, not indicated but uh, oriented on this so we're going to set our zeros uh, and uh, get ready to cut this thing. So let's go. And if you're uh, not interested in machining stuff, just kind of skip ahead. But uh, we're going to go ahead and zero our Y axis off. Uh, to me, it's the back edge. Kick over, zero that. That's actually all we need to do. I'm not worried about the, uh, the X axis. I'm just worried about the Y axis here. So we are centering up, three zero. Then we're gonna keep back, 187. zero again because we're going to use a three eighths inch end mill so when we change end mills here change out you get the actual end mill Eight inch carbide coated ML5 flute variable index for the machining nerds. Don't worry, I'm one of them. Alright, so now we need to be able to 
set our Z. So just get a touch off on the barrel. Now I'm going to zero this while touching it, but I'm actually going to uh, I'm going to lock the quill at negative negative one thousand. And if I need to come back and adjust it, I can always file on it just a little bit to remove that that little teeny bit. So come off of it. And I am locked in. All right. Now let me verify that my Y0 is actually truly a Y0 without putting my head right in the middle of your uh, your screen there. I should not be cutting metal right now. It's okay if it's just rubbing, and it is, I am bang on. Bang on, my zero is actually zero. So again, I'm gonna stay a thousandth short when I actually cut this. So I'm gonna take seven and 14. So seven off uh, the back, which is, uh, according to the drawing, we did the left side. And then the front, uh, what I'm pointing at right now, was the right side, so that'll be 14 thousandths. So let's go ahead, set to seven, and we'll lock our table down. Seven and a half thousandths, I can take that. And let's go. take a uh, quick measurement just to verify take a quick uh, just to verify so we took seven off so we should be oh, we're at 398 right should be about 391 are you and we are indeed at 391. So that was seven thousandths. So let's uh, go over to the other side. Let's do a little bit of math here. So we know it's three ninety one. So we can go point three nine one plus the width of our cutting tool, which is three seventy five. So plus point three seven five is seven six six. Let me verify that can be our new zero. Well, maybe not maybe seven six seven, yeah. No. Nope. There we go. Okay. 
Now we've got our new zero there. We just kissed the edge of the blade. We're going to come in 14 thousandths. And lock our table down. Okay. And then we're going to go again. So here we go. measurement just to verify that we are down to where we should be down to. And we are at three seven four and a half. So we should be right there. Let's take it out. I can leave the jig in place. And any adjustment to the width of the hood uh, now I'm just going to do by hand. But uh, let's go get the slide and let's see if that fits in. At least for a hood width. We still need to take the uh, uh, the hood back for the hood length. I slip up the hood length gauge in there. All right, moment. Oh, true that I should have the. Uh, is is <laughs> I, sh I should no note. You need to have your barrel alignment block. When you're doing this, because uh, you you may have cut off more more on one side than uh, he, 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 he. all right. Oh yeah. Make sure you get your barrel alignment block, because um, again, if you removed too much off of one side um, and it's rotated, then uh, uh, it, it may go in. Okay, but right now this is sliding in oh perfectly, and there's no wiggle. So we got this thing, uh, just just a hair, just a hair, but it's <clears throat> really if I push it. So we're we're good on width, okay. So I'm gonna put it back in here, okay. And now, now we need to uh, adjust the back. So based on. math based on the math we did earlier we need to take 37 thousandths off of here so again I'm gonna I'm gonna go short and check and uh and kind of go short, check, go short, check until until we get it. So, gonna zero off the top, and then we're gonna come down. We'll, we'll go thirty. We'll, we'll go thirty to start with. Well, actually, let's we'll go twenty. Not that. Uh, I think 20 might accidentally fit. I don't. Uh, but I, I don't want to... This, this barrel is only held in here securely with this set screw. Uh, so I, I don't want to rock it too hard so that it might jiggle around to get an uneven cut across the top. Taking 21,000 off the top. I'll just do measure verify, measure verify until we get it.
That should have been 21,000 soft. You said this was 1.350. So minus 21, that should be 1.329. We'll see what this is actually reading now. F1.330, okay, I'll take that. Okay, here, we'll, uh, we'll even do a little test fit to see, <laughs> just to make sure it's not accidentally fitting. It's totally not, but we knew that. So again, total of 37,000 needs to come off. We've taken off 21. We are at 1.330. We need to be at 1.313. So 17,000 more. We're gonna go ahead and just go 15. We're gonna go 15 more. And then we'll check. first this says I'm um, 2,000 long it says I'm at 1.315 so we'll, we'll see if this uh, this goes in and oh it, it's clicking in very very stiffly So I don't know if you guys can uh, hear that. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make sure I get in focus here. It's not gonna want to focus because I got that big light on there, but it is locking in and it's clicking. So that that is good. Okay. That means we got a nice, good, tight fit, and this is why I always go short, uh, just in case I accidentally uh, mess up a measurement somewhere. Okay, so we, we've got good lockup, like really tight, solid lockup, and I'm really liking that. Okay, so uh, from here, we have fitted the barrel hood. The only thing next to get this gun back uh, up and running is make sure that the lower lugs are fit, and we'll get to that next. Okay, back at the bench, and uh, now that we're done with the, uh, the lug cutter, Gonna go ahead and uh, take it up, put it away. So here you can kind of better see the uh, the pointed end of this. That uh, that's pointing up into the barrel. So um, it does leave a tiny little mark on the bottom of your barrel, but you know it's on the inside and un underneath your barrel, so you know, I wouldn't wouldn't worry about it too much. It ain't, it ain't you're gonna kill your gun, all right? So. Um, yeah, it looks pretty clean. Um, I'm, I'm definitely satisfied with that. And uh, the next thing we got to do now is put our link back in and, uh, and and test the fit again. So hopefully this thing doesn't make a fight me uh, again. Getting this thing put back in. And we'll get this link put back in. Me and my fat fingers. If you got big fingers, working with this link pin is probably one of the worst things you're ever going to do. Let me see if I can get this tapped in. Started. Ugh. Just wanted to go in kind of crooked. If 
But it is wanting to start. There we go. Okay. Here's my link. I'm going to go back over to the vise and squish this thing in. And I will be right back. All right, we are off the mill now, back on the bench. And uh, now that we have our barrel hood uh, fit rather nicely, and I know I couldn't show you guys over at the mill, the lighting was all terrible with the, the work lights pointed directly at the work. So I'll go ahead and show you guys. Uh, there we go. So we're in there, and there there is a hair wiggle, but I mean, you really got to be feeling for it. So that's a good sliding fit. That's good for reliability. Um, and you guys can hear it clicking in and out. Um, and that clicking is what you want. It's the uh, don't don't be scared of it. You, you don't need to file that off. Uh, what that clicking is is the very top of the barrel hood right here clicking in past because if you think about radial distance uh, the distance that the the edge of the barrel hood right here has to travel is actually longer than the flat side where it locks in so it's just clicking snicking past uh, the breech face and uh, eventually it'll wear the Cerakote off the slide right there where it's doing that but um, that's that's fine uh, if you want you can take a file and just kind of burnish the edge down you know where, where you cut that I'm going to do it anyway because I machined it and when you machine things like that it leaves a burr so that's it's nice and soft now I'm going to do the same thing over here just to take off that sharp edge because I don't like cutting myself on, on my own gun parts so just I'm not removing material I'm just taking the burr off the corner yeah see that's nice and soft now Okay, so to start working on the uh, the lower lugs here, you got to put the your link and your pin in. Um, and this will be the first time I use this 10-8 block <coughs> from 10-8 Precision. Um, it, as you see, we've got we've got a bunch of holes on here, and, and they all kind of serve a purpose. Um, and there's holes on either side. Uh, you notice here as for laying your barrel. You know, either way you want to lay it. But this hole right here is for catching your link pin when you drive it out. So, I'm actually just going to kind of line, line it up as it was. Okay, and this is the same link I pulled off the barrel I'm replacing it with. Because that gun ran great with this link. And so as long as we fit everything the same, uh, I should be able to use the same link. I don't need to leave the link in that gun because that gun or that barrel. I'm sorry. I don't need to leave this link in that barrel because that barrel will never see service ever again. Unfortunately. Now this link pin is a press fit. Is a press fit pin, and I absolutely hate driving this pin in. Um, is it, getting it started is just terrible. See, <laughs> oh man, and, and you take this thing in and out a bunch of times. Let me let me try. Let me see if the other side will cooperate, or just the other side of the pin. Oh, this barrel's just gonna fight me. You know, we'll we'll get this pin in, and uh, we'll come back. Okay, now some of you who have done this before uh, are probably wondering why in the world I was putting that link in when I already knew that I was going to have to use this kit. Especially if you've used this uh, lug cutting kit before, uh, you know you don't put the link in to use it. So what I was doing was simply um, installing the barrel into the gun just to kind of give graphic representation here. Um, of, of what's happening before we cut the lugs here. So here we have my, uh, my 2011 competition gun that this barrel is going in. Um, and I haven't cut the lugs yet, but I put the link in and you can see that this barrel does not do anything. It kind of wiggles around, but it cannot, uh, it, it can't go anywhere. Okay. Uh, it's not moving. So meaning we, we need to cut the lugs on this thing. So it should be able to move up and down in the downstroke. Uh, however, we do see the, uh, the barrel does, is placed properly in the fully downlinked position. 
Um, this is also kind of what I was checking for. We can see that uh, the, the feed ramp is positioned correctly in the frame, and that makes me happy uh, for uh, reliable feeding. In the, in the downlink position, I do see uh, the correct uh, declination in the barrel in the downlink, and uh, so we, we should be okay. So, I'm gonna put the frame over here for right now. I'm gonna take this link out. After struggling so hard, I ended up putting it, <laughs> after I got the pin started, putting it over, uh, putting it over in my mill vise and squeezing it in with that. Now let's see how many swear words I throw out trying to get this pin out. Whoop. Yep. Don't hit it harder, hit it heavier. size punch for this thing if I hit that little punch in here any harder I'm gonna snap it right off Man. we will come back when I've got this thing out all right I got that thing out Sometimes these pins want to go in and out only one way. Uh, that one's got a direction, so to speak, to it. So what we got to do here is we got to cut the lower lugs, okay? Um, and we're going to do this uh, with this Brownells lower lug cutting kit. And I kind of showed it before, but let's kind of talk about the different pieces in this. So we've got... Uh, this bar which is going to replace your recoil um, guide assembly in the slide and it's got a little set screw in here uh, that pushes up against your barrel upwards to make sure that your barrel is held in the proper position and to, and to make sure it's held securely while we're cutting it okay um, this little handle guy right here uh, this is for using I, I don't actually use it uh, but you, you can take your grip safety out of your gun okay you can take the grip safety out and put this in place of it and uh, pin it with the, your uh, your thumb safety in place to help push your uh, your slide along. I, I don't use it, I just, yeah, you'll, you'll see how I do it. It's, you can use it if you want, um, it's there for you to use, but I, I just, I don't know, I don't use it. And then we've got uh, two cutters, okay, and the little cutting cutter hand wheel thing, okay. So this is a little hand wheel. You put the cutter into here. This goes on the other side. Okay. And uh, oop, like this. And you turn and, and cut it. Okay. So the, the kit comes with uh, two different size cutters. It comes with a smaller one and a bigger one. Um, it comes with a .186 diameter cutter and a .195 diameter cutter. Um, 0.186 to me has never really been anything more than a time waster. Uh, some people will tell you always use the small one first. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's some methodology behind that. Um, the 0.195 has always worked out just fine for me. Um, if you remember the diameter of your slide stop that is going to be resting against the feet of your uh, your barrel your, your barrel lugs is 0 0.200 in diameter okay so what we're trying to achieve right now what, what's is we, we need to cut this back and my phone's going off again Yep, 
Yeah, what's up? Hello. Sorry about that. The uh, the world just loves to call me. Uh, so, like I was saying, uh, di diameter cutters. Uh, we got the point one nine five inch cutter, and uh, we'll kind of mock it up so you can kind of see how this goes. Uh, you take your your cutter, goes in your little cutting handle. There's a little set screw right here to hold it down. Uh, but this goes through the slide stop uh, hole, okay. And then this little nub guy, little knurled um, handle over here, just goes on the other side, just to uh, keep it all lined up. And uh, you would do this with your slide and barrel already in the gun. And pushing forward on the slide, you're going to turn this, and the cutting action goes on in here, and uh, it cuts your lugs as you push the uh, the whole kind of slide assembly forward. So, and then uh, I'll show you where, where you stop at. You, you go until the thumb safety can engage. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, well, I need to show you guys how to put this thing together too, don't I? So, if I can remember where I threw my barrel at. Oh, it's right here. I'm going to drop this in here. Okay, we have uh, this, this piece. Uh, remember that I said this replaces the recoil uh, parts in your slide. So we're going to put this through the spring tunnel and just kind of put it exactly where it would go. Okay. Now I've already checked, okay, in case some of you guys are wondering, saying, oh man, you're about to cut your lugs, you haven't verified your, your upper lugs and all that. Uh, I, I already verified all that, okay. I already took the, uh, the firing pin out and um, and verified that that was good and that my height's good and everything else, that the upper lugs were fine. I didn't need to touch them. It's, it's in proper alignment. So there's, there's no extra fitting that needs to go on up here. Um, so. Yeah. I think this comes with a little Allen wrench for that, but I probably threw it in my little, oh, let me see here. My little magnetic dish of Allen wrenches. Yep, <laughs> this one fits. Okay. So we tighten down this, uh, this set screw here. This is a pointed set screw. It pushes up on the barrel and it pushes it into alignment. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. It's, it's uh, the barrel's in there. It's not going anywhere. Uh, I'm going to check with my barrel alignment block to ensure that uh, this stays straight. So the barrel is now straight, which is important because we need the barrel lugs or the, the lower lugs to be cut straight. Uh, if they're not cut straight, well then we're, we're in for a different type of hurt, okay? All right, so now that we're set up in the bench vise, um, I've got my, uh, my, my slide assembly put together, okay, with my, my barrel with the uh, uh, little doohickey in there, okay? I've assembled it onto my frame and slid it as far back as it's gonna go. Um, I've got my cutter, okay, in my cutter handle, and uh, I'm gonna put some cutting oil on it. And you should probably have like a rag or some paper towels or something, because it makes a little bit of a mess. Okay, you're gonna be clearing uh, the metal chips and the oil. So I'm gonna put a little rag down. And put some cutting oil on there. Uh, That's just some dark threading oil. You get a Home Depot or Amazon. Okay, so now we're in there. Like I say, you can use that little handle if you want. Um, I just do this by hand. And we are going to keep pushing forward and turning this handle, okay, to cut the bottom lugs. And this is going to take a little while, but we're going to do this until the thumb safety will engage into the slide. I can tell you this is going a lot faster than I'm used to, so that means we're not really cutting uh, a whole lot of metal off the bottom, so let that be a note to you, KKM barrels are going to cut, the lower lugs are going to cut pretty easy due to how they cut them. Alright, so we've, we've kind of slowed down on how much we're cutting, so it's not cutting as fast as it was, so I'm going to back the barrel all the way back. I'm going to pull out my cutter and I'm going to clean it off. Okay. 
So you can use a brush. Uh, I like to use air. Okay, so clean all the chips out of it that could have been clogging it up and causing it to not cut as well. Reinsert and here we go. Yep, now we're moving. You, you, need, you can put quite a bit of pressure on the back of the slide. Uh, you, you don't have to baby it. Okay, right now I'm watching the, the thumb safety and I'm watching the notch in the slide to watch them come into alignment. And now I'm going to start, I'm getting close. So I'm going to start checking it. And the plus for using the little handle it comes with is you don't have to, you know, that, that handle kind of becomes your third hand, so to speak. So that you can be doing this and uh, testing your thumb safety as you go. Oh, okay, we're just beginning to go. I'm going to go just... There we go. Okay, so now our thumb safety is just engaging and it looks great and there it's perfectly centered up in the notch so our lugs are cut again we're back that all the way back when i pull my cutter out and yep my cutter is loaded pretty good quite you and uh, i'm just going to do a little bit of a cleanup a little bit of a cleanup pass because right now there's probably uh, a little rough on the lower lugs and I found that just kind of going back over real quick um, spin this guy really fast and just kind of push push lightly and uh, okay and you just kind of clean it up a little bit so our lower lugs are cut and I'm just gonna blow all the chips out Blur the end of my frame. And we should be good to start doing a final fitting. So I'll meet you back over reoriented on the bench.